Imagine you have a stroke or meet with an accident. The next thing you know, you wake up in a hospital bed. You hear your loved ones crying and you can hear them talk. You want to talk to them and tell them you are alright. Alas, try as you may, you are unable to talk or make any movement that can grab their attention. You are locked in. Locked in syndrome, also known as pseudocoma, is a condition where the patient is conscious and able to think, but unable to move or communicate verbally. This means that these individuals cannot consciously or voluntarily chew, swallow, breathe, or speak. However, they can move their eyes up and down as well as blink, allowing them to communicate non-verbally. As a result, affected individuals are bedridden and have to rely completely on their caregiver. A special feature of this syndrome is that despite the physical paralysis, the cognitive function of the patient is preserved along with normal sleep-wake cycles. So, how can one get the locked-in syndrome? Damage to a specific part of the brainstem, specifically the pons, results in locked-in syndrome. The pons is the middle part of the brainstem that connects the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord. When the motor cortex of the cerebrum initiates movements, the signals travel through the brainstem and spinal cord before they reach the muscles. The pathway between the brain and the spinal cord is called the corticospinal tract. There are two such tracts in the pons, each from either side of the brain. When these corticospinal tracts are damaged, the bridge between the brain and the muscles is lost and the patient becomes quadriplegic. Not only is the pons an important motor relay center, but it is also an important sensory relay center. The sensations such as pain, touch, temperature, and proprioception can be either diminished or completely lost when it's damaged. Consciousness and cognitive function are preserved since the upper brain areas are not affected. Pons is supplied by the artery called the basilar artery. An ischemic or hemorrhagic stroke of this basilar artery can lead to tissue death or infarction in the pons and result in locked-in syndrome. Additional causes of locked-in syndrome are heroin abuse, abscesses or tumors in the pons, toxins, and others. Diagnosing locked-in syndrome is very difficult, as most patients will be in a coma for a while before they develop the locked-in syndrome. The diagnosis can easily be missed if eye movement is not assessed. 50% of the time, it is a loved one that notices the eye movements while talking to the patient appearing to be in a coma. Diagnosis can be confirmed from several tests, which include MRI and EEG. An MRI will show damage in the pons and will help us rule out damage anywhere else in the brain, while the EEG will reveal normal brain activity and sleep-wake cycles in those with locked-in syndrome. At present, there is no specific treatment or cure available for the locked-in syndrome. As these individuals are not able to even breathe without support, it is very important to provide supportive treatment for breathing and feeding, especially early on. Currently, the mainstay of treatment is physiotherapy, comfort care, nutritional support, and prevention of systematic complications such as respiratory infections. Most people with the locked-in syndrome do not live beyond the early stage of the disease, while some live for 10 to 20 more years. Although it is extremely rare to regain any significant motor function, it isn't impossible either.